Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you again to uh, a continuation of this series on refuting the uh, so called scientific miracles of the Quran. Uh, today, we are going to uh, tackle yet another claim. This time, we're dealing with the issue that there are seven heavens and seven earths. With me here in studio to address this, uh, Dr. J. Smith. Welcome back. Yeah, this is a curious one, Al Fadi. I don't know really where, why Muslims claim uh, that this is scientifically viable. Uh, we now know that the the seven heavens they say are the seven planets. Uh, we now know they're probably nine planets. Uh, they got that wrong. Uh, we are not even sure that Pluto is a planet now. That's pretty had been de declassified. Uh, so it's one of those odd things that we'll never know the answer to that. I think this is coming out of lots of literature that existed at this time. Dante's Inferno refers to the seven heavens and the seven earths. But the, I, my question is, where are the seven earths that's talking about? What, where are this delineation right. of different right. Earths? And is that the planets then? And so Muslims, and whenever I ask, we used to bring this, they bring us, brought this up in Speaker's Corner quite often, and we always ask them, pushed back on them, and say, can you explain where the seven heavens are? First of all, are these galaxies? Are these different heavens? Uh, and they would say, well, this is what Muhammad went up to, the seven heavens. So I say, okay, where are these heavens? Well, they said, well, they, 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 so that's what they're referring to. It's the seven heavens that we go to after death. Different layers. Muhammad, exactly. Moses was in the fifth heaven. Allah is in the, in the seventh heaven, and that's where Allah resides. Interestingly, that's where Muhammad went to, which means Muhammad was face to face with Allah. That's another problem. But that's another problem. claim that he never did that, and right? You know, fascinating. That's the yeah. mirage. And if, ask a Muslim, what's he doing up in heaven, next face to face with God? If God can, if God cannot fa be face to face with man, according to Islam. Uh, if he could be in Muhammad's presence, could he not also be in Moses' presence in the burning bush, which he was, then why are you having a problem with Jesus coming to earth? That's right. So that's another theological exactly. playback and pushback. But exactly. I'd still like to know, and if any Muslim, and I want to talk to you Muslims, if you could come back and tell me where are these seven earths? Help me here. Because this to me is an error. This is not a proof. This is an error. And obviously, if, if, unless, of course, this is borrowing from other literature, and these are not meant to be physical heavens yeah. and physical earth. This is nothing more than imagery. And listen, you know, uh, I, I studied geology. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I studied basically is that, you know, you dig a hole and you can see layers, different layers, but nowhere that I ever studied that there are specifically seven major layers. No, no one ever said so something like that. So could that be what they're referring to? They're different layers. It's possible. But it depends, you know, so you see, uh, uh, the, the, the beauty about uh, Islamic apologetics uh, is that it evolves over time. So now they might be telling you it's uh, seven planets. In fact, we have this theory that uh, the reason why Muslims, when they go to Mecca and circle the Kaaba seven times, it's after these seven planets that you mentioned. For instance, the sun, the moon, the earth, Mars, you know, Venus, you know, the things that they were able to see, or maybe they adapted from others. That's one possibility why they do it seven times. Can I and, do a pushback on that? Uh, you could, but I mean, an aerial image, by the way, of the Kaaba shows something interesting. It's almost like the Kaaba represents a star in the middle. And then you have like a, a, an ark, you know, that I've been there and prayed in. It's called the, uh, uh, you know, the place of Ishmael, you know. So these are theories, you know. Uh, for now, I'm, I'm not open really to confirm or deny these things because even when they call that Allah is the God moon, I, I, I look at it as a theory. I mean, there isn't anything that I can use to support I want to get a pushback idea. on that because the number seven yeah. is significant because you also have the number seven when the Jamarats, when they throw stones at the Jamarat, they have to do seven we or 49. We know that also it's why. It's a multiplication of seven. I would suggest right. that this is nothing more than a borrow from Judaism. Judaism has uh, sanctified the number Quite seven. possible. And Quite much possible. of the, many yeah. of the practices are coming out of Judaism. Take and, a look. And, and running between the two The Safa and Mira, yeah, exactly. back and forth, yeah, seven yeah. times. Those yeah. two t those yeah. two s situations where Ishmael was and that's where Hagar went back mm -hmm. and forth. And that's part of the uh, uh, of the Kaaba as well, all, along those two. So right. that's also from Judaism. Seven again. So I would suggest this has nothing to do with I mean, looking brother, for helicopters. It's all possible. That's why I say all the time, these are theories, and we can really have stronger theories than others. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with you, because it seemed like Muhammad was fascinated by a lot of the Judeo-Christian teachings, push back specifically on that? I don't think Muhammad had anything to do with Jewish, this. I mean, uh, let's hypothetically say Muhammad. You know, <laughs> we know the one. authors of the Quran, of course. Uh, you know, again, once again, I, I am with you that there is so many things that we can definitely point out yeah. uh, to refute these arguments that there was a man by the name Muhammad. We know that there is an argument now that if that's the case, how come his name never popped up? No, I'm going to push back on he had anything to do with this book. 
Man, I'm, 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 I'm on board. I am on board with you. You know, but here's what, here's another thing I want to say. I point out. Remember the other day we were show, talking about uh, some of the errors that are found in the in the Quranic manuscripts and insertions. One of it has to do with the insertion of with the seven. Seven. You yeah. know, so it seemed like there is an adaptation of something of some sort. Isn't that interesting? So we brought up now the seven heavens and the seven earths. We brought up the seven rotations around the Kaaba. We brought up the seven going from the middle to the Safa back and forth seven times. We've talked about the stones that you're throwing the stones to the Jambarat seven times, seven, 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 seven. We're seeing seven everywhere. And also the the variant that had to include and re-include the number seven. And that's at a later date. So it looks like this seven is borrowed at a later date. We're just now showing that this right. probably has some historical context. The next time we talk to you all, we'll probably be able to solve where all this seven comes from. Yeah. Great, right. great. But be careful, Muslims. Don't say this is a proof. It looks like this is nothing more than borrowing from the Jews. It looks like it's nothing more than borrowing. These are are uh, what you might say idiomatic expressions that have been created possibly by the Jews again because of the magic number seven. They see it as their holy number. And it looks like the Muslims, notice that the Muslims have started with three prayers in the Quran. You only find pre three prayers. They now move to five by the time you get to the Hadith. You can see why they didn't. They had to go out of three because the Jews play three times a day. They then had to go to five. That is, as you move on, you create new numbers. You bring in new, uh, uh, in this case, new practices. It looks like we're going to be talking about this for quite a few years. Yet oh, to come. absolutely, man! I mean, you got me excited just thinking about a new series for that. So, with that says, you know, don't give these arguments to us because that's what we do with it. You know, we end up uh, basically creating another dilemma out of this, and uh, you know, we're hopefully we'll be doing another. Uh, series on that. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, we pray that you would find this uh, uh, yet another uh, helpful tool in your ministry. And if you're a Muslim, please, as we've been encouraging you, if you watch this, write us your comments, reach out to both of us, and uh, we would welcome uh, your interaction with us. Have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please, Consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.